And well, uh, good morning for those of you who are in the US and good afternoon or good evening for those of you who are elsewhere in the world or who are watching this remotely. Um, so my name is Mitch Weisberg and I'm gonna be presenting on social action projects, uh, academics and foundational skills. And I wanna let everybody know that if you want, you can download this presentation or you get access to this presentation. There's a QR code. If you want to use the QR code, there's a, um, there's a URL uh, down be beneath the QR code that I hope you can see uh, that you can access the presentation as well. And while we're repeating the slide at the end, and let me just admit one more person here. And uh, well, let's get started. And I do want to let everybody know that we are recording the session, so um, uh, don't do anything embarrassing. Um, and that'll make it available for, for people who could not attend. And, uh, and also, if, if there's anything here that you want to repeat, you can look over the archive. Uh, we're gonna start with a video from the, uh, from the session, but you know, I just realized when I shared, I don't think that I shared the computer sound. So I'm going to do this again and share the computer sound. And here we go. Hopefully. And with that, we're launching the Creative Bravery Festival. It's our, it's the first day. And in the US, it's uh, in New York, it's eight o'clock in the morning. So we're kicking it off here, although I understand that you all have, uh, have been up for quite a while. When, uh, when we were preparing the slides, there was a master slide that was, that was sent to us. And I just love this quote. And uh, you know, so one of the reasons why we're using social action projects is that uh, we really hope that education can help us change the world. And in order to do that, we all have to be brave because we all have to change a little bit the way we educate and we have to try new things. Now, some of these new things actually have been tried in other places. So if we just for a moment journey to Finland, we can take a look at the Finnish curriculum so the Finnish curriculum is all based on the premise that the purpose of education is to develop children as human beings and as citizens. And they look at um, seven foundational skills in order to do that. And I think that social action projects really fit into those. So just you know, walking through these, first, uh, thinking and learning to learn. Second, cultural competence to be able to get along with others. Um, who may be different. Third, taking care of ourselves and taking care of others, man managing day day like daily activities safely. Uh, fourth, multiliteracy, uh, to be able to function in different environments, not just um, reading literacy uh, and math literacy, but um, other media and to be able to um, uh, relate it to, to, to cultures as well. Uh, technical competence, uh, competence for the world of work and entrepreneurship, and uh, participating and influence in building a sustainable future. And if you think about those seven aspects, those are also core to the types of social action projects that, that we may be, um, that you may be trying in your own classrooms. Now, when we talk about social action projects and learning, um, I'd like to go back to Bloom. So I'm sure many of you, or if not most of you, or all of you are familiar with, you know, Bloom's level of learnings. And just take a look at that top, that top area of Bloom. What we've done is we've kind of inverted the triangle because the create stage allows you to do the most. And that's where we encourage kids to ask questions such as, um, how can we innovate? What can we change? What can we invent? What can we design? That's really where we want kids to be as they're applying and synthesizing what they've learned. 
And this, those top four areas of Bloom are really the whole basis of project-based learning, which is basically what social action projects are designed to do. While we're having the children create, evaluate, analyze, and apply, we also are using these projects to develop other foundational skills that will last a lifetime, such as the four C's, creativity, critical thinking, communications, and collaboration. So in creativity, we, we want to um, use things like creative storytelling for student-centered learning and teaching. For critical thinking, we want them to be able to view the world from different angles. For communications, we want them to communicate in different modes and practice those skills with each other. And to collaborate, we want them to work together to create a shared vision, to work in teams and to learn how to resolve conflicts. As we're going through those with social action projects, we can tailor the projects to the special needs of different students. We can be teaching the way they naturally learn and the way we naturally learn also. And also understand that it's not just about language, it's math, it's about growing kids as human beings. And um, I'm not actually looking at the chat right now, but if there are, um, but I should. So I'm gonna see if I can, I guess there is a chat. Um, so um, yeah, I'd like to encourage you actually to uh, type in the chat, maybe put in where you're from um, and the types of projects that you do. And then we can also try to bring them into the presentation and, and maybe bring you up if, if there's something that, um, that you would like to contribute. Anyhow, going back to the presentation. So, um, so what we want to do is we want to have kids operating in those top levels of broom, blooms through project-based learning. We want to give them the foundational skills. And the way I like to do this is through implementing design thinking. Now, there are a lot of different models of design thinking, and all of them are really similar. What we've done is we've broken design thinking down into seven steps. And so that gives teachers a way to walk students through each step in project-based learning and makes it easier to monitor what the students are doing and having them work together in order to accomplish in some end goal. The first step is, is posing problems so that students then actually accept some challenge based on the teacher. Instead of just taking an assignment, we want to give the students agency, which, is a, uh, which actually gives them the motivation to continue and do some of those other steps. So some of, it, some of the challenge might be something that really interests them, but some of the challenge also um, is about actually giving them a chance to shine in front of other people. Once they've accepted a challenge, there's actually the information that they have to have at their fingertips in order to complete the assignment. Now, this may be research. They may have, may have to look at some background information. There may be academic, academic principles involved. There may be practical issues. There may be current solutions that are out there. Um, and you can have the students working individually or in small groups, or as a class, you can guide them through this research. Once they've gotten the information they need in order to complete the, the project, the next step is to discuss what they found define the outcomes that they want to achieve, get them into a brainstorming mode, get them to think critically about potential solutions and obstacles, and then move them into a decision phase, understanding different ways of making decisions and how to involve other people in decisions is a core skill that they're going to need the rest of their lives. So we want them to pretty much under maybe a teacher's guidance, but on their own, decide on some possible solution, design the elements based on their assessment of the benefits, risks, and costs of the projects. Then the students compose some description, script, or defense of their solution to show how that's going to, to, to solve the product, and then they're going to build some type of a prototype. Now, in this session, we're going to be building, we're going to be showing how to build the, the prototype using a program called 3D Bear, uh, which is an augmented reality program. And I'm going to take a moment in a few minutes to show you a little bit about 3D Bear. But in some fashion, whether they're building dioramas, whether they're building 
um, plays, whether they're writing stories, they're going to build some mock-up of their solution that they could then present to others. And then the final step in order to make it real is for them to document and present what they've done. And so this should give teachers a framework, or this does give teachers a framework in order to walk through social action projects and keep, keep the kids on target. And uh, thank you, Claire. So um, uh, thank you for your comment. Oh, and there's five C's. I like that five C's, including curiosity. Yeah, I, and actually, Claire, I have to say, um, that's part of getting the students to accept the challenge, and you're, and you're so right, because it's by encouraging the, student, the kids to be curious about their environment that we put them into a creative mode and, and able to then uh, use some of the others, use some of the other skills. Now, the, this, these seven steps are a framework for doing design thinking. Um, at 3D Bear, we have a pedagogical model, which we call engage, learn, master. So engage is the way you get the students to really um, be interested in the product and motivating the students to continue. Now, part of this is to get them to really want to do the product project, but part of this also is to give them the confidence that they can do the project and they can persevere. So that's the engage step. The learn step is something that teachers have done for centuries anyhow. So basically the learn step is having the students learn. In projects, we're having the students learn by doing. And so by learning by doing, they're exploring some concepts and procedures. They're solving real problems. Um, the, uh, this is online and hands-on activities. But then, an, but the, and the third step that we want the students to go through is to is not just to perform some project, but to master the skills that are around the project. So that's having the kids do some more advanced design and problem solving. That's having the kids think, uh, going meta, if you will, and apply, analyze, evaluate, and create what they've done. Um, and then also having the kids reflect, assess, practice, and learn how to self-direct, and these are lifetime skills. So that's our pedagogical model. And if you see, it fits nicely on the design thinking, because in the accept stage um, in design thinking, that's where you're engaging. In the learning stage, that's where you're, the, the students and the, the class are researching, discussing, deciding, and composing. And in the mastery stage, that's where the students are building, documenting, and presenting. So now what I'd, I'd like to do is I'd like to um, do a quick overview of just 3D Bear, because I'm going to use 3D Bear as an example for projects, and then I'm going to present four types of projects. So let's see, having had my computer go down earlier, let's see if I can get this to work. And okay, I'm going to uh, shrink the presentation. I'm going to move my screen over. And what you see now is my iPad. And I'm going to go into the 3D Bear program. 3D Bear is an app that works on uh, mobile devices, iOS, and Androids. And you see the icon here on my screen on the top left. And I'll go into 3D Bear. And just in 3D, yes. So we can, we're just oh. seeing the, your presentation. I think sometimes in Zoom you have to stop the share and I always find this a bit confusing, but if you stop sharing and then you, you, share, you can share your screen again, is that right? Are you wanting to? Are there a, is there a problem seeing my? Um... We just, we're just seeing the, the, the presentation, but you want ah. us now to see the screen, do you? So if you go back yes. in, we should be able is to that, see. Can you see that's it now? It. That's it, that's brilliant. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to get back out of here in a second right now. So basically, 3D Bear, it, you know, here's the app. It, it's, it's, you know, I'm using it on my iPhone. Um, I tap the app and I go into it. And, you know, just when you start 3D Bear, um, there are a whole bunch of lesson plans that are in here. Um, this AR tasks are, advantage, are examples of what other people have done. But basically, this round green square in the center is where you get into the real creation part of 3D Bear. And you can see that basically all we're doing right now is looking through my camera. 
So in 3D Bear, kids are going to be creating scenes based on whatever the task is. And then they're going to be sharing the scenes and videos with the class or the teacher. So I'm going to tap on this left with the three objects. And that's going to pull up different items. So if, if this were math related, there's basic forms. Um, there's seasonal things. There's animals. Um, there's, uh, there's different blocks. There's plants. There's emotions. Um, there's about 300 different items. In addition, I'm going to press this plus all the way on the right. And on the plus, you can see there's items in 3D Bear. There's import, which means that anything that the kids have created, they can, um, using some 3D design software, they could bring that in. Um, you can access, you know, there's, what, 10 million different objects on Thingiverse, and there's about 4 million objects based on Sketchfab. So pretty much anything that you can envision, either this, the kids can create or they can bring in from Thingiverse or Sketchfab. I'm going to go back to the basic items here, and I'm going to, let's say, just quickly bring in a couple items. I'm going to bring in a cone right now. And if you see the cone now is placed, into my camera space. Now I can manipulate this. I can change the color if I want to. I'm going to change it to brown. Um, I can uh, tap it and move it around. I can move it left and right. I can move it away from me. I can move it towards me. I can grab these arrows here and I can move it up. Um, I can manipulate it by, say, rotating it. So I'm going to rotate it um, by 90 degrees here, although I can rotate it by my fingers as well. Um, and then I can also change it in one dimension by these three items here. Um, if I wanted to make it larger, you see that the blue dimension makes it um, in, increasing the size in the vertical. So there's, there's an item. Um, I'm going to now place another item here, a sphere, and do some of the manipulation. Let's make it coffee colored. And let's now move it a little bit. I'm going to shrink it. Um, I'm going to move it up. And I'm going to actually see if I can get it right into my cone. Oops. And Um, a little bit like an ice cream cone, not exactly, um, but I'm trying to share my screen here. And now um, I can add to my scene and let's just say that I want a uh, sheep in my scene as well and maybe make it larger and the sheep kind of eating the ice cream cone. If I wanted, if, if this were my scene that I wanted to show, you know, a sheep eating an ice cream cone, I could share it with my teacher by pressing this round button here. And I can take a picture, which is by tapping it, or, or I can hold this down and I can create a video of my project. So, um, oops, so let me just hold it. And you can see there's a red circle there as I'm creating a video and, and moving around. So pretty much, you know, th that's 3D Bear. It's pretty simple. Um, it's actually, uh, we have it, we're using it uh, with um, starting in pre-K. And um, actually, let me just come out of this share screen here. Uh, uh, we're using as early as pre-K and as late as uh, university students. So that's the reason why I wanted to show it to you is that that's actually the, the package we're, I'm going to use to demonstrate or, you know, these lesson plans are really designed um, for 3D Bear, but they actually could be used with, um, let me just go back to share screen here. Uh, they actually could be used with any method of um, project management, um, but you'll, you'll, you'll see what I mean in a second. So um, let me go down here to the next slide here and let me talk about the first actual project. Now, um, in e 
from the slides, there's there's a link into each one of these lesson plans. So if you if you download the slides, I'm going to go here into the social justice lesson plan and let you see this. So um, we found kids are really interested in, in all the issues that are swirling around 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 social social justice, the Me Too movement, the Black Lives Matter movement, um, the Equal Pay for movement. So let me just expand this a little bit to make it a little bit easier for you all to see. So in this social justice merchandising uh, project, this was actually developed by a teacher who um, teaches Windows merchandising uh, to high school students. So those students are learning how to create shop windows. And of course, today, they don't have access to the shop, the shops and the shop windows to, to design the, the, uh, the windows in shops. So she wanted them to create a virtual window, but this gave her the opportunity to, um, to have the students focus on something other than merely merchandising products. So in this case, students are going to choose two, um, is, are going to choose a social justice issue, and they're going to develop two scenes to demonstrate that issue one scene demonstrating the issue itself and the second scene demonstrating a solution to the issue. So um, in this case, there's a, um, the description, uh, uh, students choose to create a window scene to illustrate that white men typically, in this case, typically get paid more than women or people of color. And this particular scene um, is showing a white male with a bigger dollar symbol than the group of people and, and the image is just about juxtaposed against the Empire State Building to show that the white males is, is getting paid more. And then the student would go and then create um, another window to show how this problem could be ameliorated. Okay, and the interesting thing is in 3D Bear, what the student did is the student created the, the images on kind of a blue screen and then um, or chroma key, and then got rid of the chroma key to place it on top of the of, of the larger scene. The way you would introduce a project like this, um, if you're talking about, you know, mer in her class, you know, merchandising is all about constructing a scene that tells a story that makes people feel something, want something, or buy something. So students are going to create two scenes using augmented reality, scenes that could be used as store windows to invite others to recognize and take action against social justice. It describes the two scenes, um, what the students are going to try to do. Um, this is an opportunity to convince others to see the world the way you do. Uh, describe to students exactly what they're going to do. They're going to research the issue. They're going to create a scene that demonstrates the problem. They're going to create a scene that demonstrates what should exist. And then they're going to present their scenes to either the class or to an outside audience. And then um, what do students need in order to create this? So if you see in this case, because she was using 3D Bear, you know, the students have to be familiar with 3D Bear. But if you think about it, you could have the students create posters. There's many other ways of doing this. You don't have to do this via 3D Bear. Okay, and then discussion questions for the teacher to conduct with the class. What what the, should this class research in advance as part of this project? How to divide the class into groups? Um, and then what to do during each class period? How students are going to present? And then after the presentations and the, the reflection part is to have the whole class then get back together and think about what they just saw and what they learned. Um, you know, have the class talk about why do you think these are still problems today? Um, how would you use photos and videos you have created to persuade other people? So what, what next steps do you think that you should be taking? Um, and how does this media and, vid and vid video editing help you get your ideas across? Then some ideas of alternative projects, what students are likely to learn, notes to other teachers who want to use this project, other things that student learn, students learn, and some way um, 
that students can assess themselves or the teacher can assess the, the, um, the students. And then here's, here's an exist, a, a, another problem that, um, you know, say their names was, was, uh, was, was another shop window that one of the students designed. So let me see, are there questions on that particular project that, or thoughts? Yeah. Mitchell, I'm, I'm just, I'm so excited. I was trying to look where I could get the app. The, oh, the, the app is available um, on the, um, the app store on Apple or on the uh, Windows Play. Right. Okay. I'm, and then I'm also, you know, if you wanted, um, you could scan this <laughs> to get to the 3D there. And there's a link there to get the app as well. Yeah. Okay. The app is basically, the, the app is free. Um, there's a paid version which allows you to set up classrooms, but I don't want to spend a lot of time you know, talking about the app because yeah. this purpose is the social media. I'm not, or the uh, social justice issues, but does that answer your question though? Yeah, I just think it's really, uh, really innovative, really different and, and interesting. And I love the, you know, I, I teach storytelling as part of my course and I love the different slant on it, that it's sort of merchandising, visual merchandising. You said they're yeah. wanting to feel something, want something or buy something. And it's a really different slant. So, yeah, I'm so glad I've come to your tent. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's an inclusive tent, and but you have to be brave. Okay, uh, second project. Um, this was this was a, a project that was done actually in Finland, um, and then we'll, I'll go onto the uh, quest description in a second. But basically, there's a park in Finland, and um, near Helsinki, and you see this little map here where the where the red is. Uh, the um, students in high school designed a quest for students in grade school or elementary school or primary school to go through to learn different aspects about the park or about biology as they're going through the park. So each point here, each number has a different activity that the kids had to do. So I view this as social action um, because it's older kids creating something for younger kids to create something to learn um, and using a public space. So I think that I, I, I love this project. So again, in the, in the uh, presentation, there's a, there's a link to the actual uh, description of the project. Um, so this, uh, it, it's a hundred acre park um, and you can see the trails. And as the kids go through the trails, um, they learn about the environment and science while while going through the the, the trails. Um, so the high school students had to apply, or if, if you did this in, in your towns, um, the high school students are applying their understanding of science and environmental principles, um, fitting them into the park and having tasks that the younger students would do. Then the younger students um, create, in this case, augmented reality scenes, but again, it could be drawings or it could be other, other things, but augmented reality fits, fits in really well. So they create augmented reality scenes within the parks, and then the students post their designs to a central place. In this case, I think it was um, a classroom Instagram account where those designs were then curated, assessed, and shared. Um, another way of doing this would be to have the students pull out all their designs and then create their own video based on the designs that, that, that they created. Um, in order to do this, uh, we ran a one day workshop for the park administrators so the park administrators could then work with the older students and the younger students. Um, they created a route around the, the, the park based on, um, based on the path. So the locations were, um, they posted challenges at different locations. Those challenges could be text-based or you could use QR codes. The students could scan the QR codes and figure out what they had to do next. There could be, let's say, videos. So if the students couldn't read, there could be videos based on QR codes. They scan the QR code, a video pops up, tell them what to do, and then and they do it in 3D Bear or whatever. Um, and then, um, this is a sample of the challenges. So in this case, at a certain point, 
um, the students had to create a scene that demonstrated what a carbon sink was. Now, the interesting thing, and interesting thing about this, is that w before I actually looked at this challenge, I had never heard the term carbon sink. Um, but a carbon sink is is like a, a tree is a good example of a carbon sink because the tree takes carbon dioxide um, from the atmosphere and solidifies it and puts it into the in, into the tree itself and so that's removing carbon dioxide from the from the atmosphere so in in this case the the older kids felt this was an important concept for the younger kids to get and so the kids had to create a scene that involved a collection of different carbon sinks so that was just one of the one of the um uh photos there's a link here to all the other challenges. And by the way, this was originally done in um, Finnish, but um, these are all in English. So, so one challenge was getting to know the birds. Um, another challenge was, um, oh, uh, I guess, Neil Sinek, I'm assuming that that's honey, but I'm not, um, but I, I don't remember, um, but it's near the, the, the parking lot. Another scene was, um, uh, orienteering. Um, another scene was about finding a most beautiful place. Um, another scene was picking up forest treasures. So, you know, in this case, there were five challenges. It's interesting. Um, we have, uh, we're working, we've been working with a museum in just outside of New York City called the Cradle Center of Aviation, which is a, um, a city about flight and they did something similar. Uh, they had high school students go through the museum and come up with um, about a dozen challenges based on the different exhibits. So there's an exhibit of the Spirit of St. Louis, which was, um, you know, the uh, the airplane that Lindbergh used to fly across the Atlantic. There's um, there's a space shuttle. There's a moon. Uh, it's a lunar landing lunar landing module. Um, so they had the had the kids walk through these different scenes, and then they had to create um, AR challenges as they're walking through the the, the museum. So this this ex example of um, having students go into a public space have older students create a project for younger students, and then the younger students learn academic principles um, while they're exploring the space and creating something that, that they then present to their classmates um, is something that can be used in a lot, a lot of different formats. Any questions on, on um, that particular project? Okay, let's go to project number three. Okay, um, project three is having the students redesign a public space. So in this example, um, this particular example in this video, oh, and I better, I, I think I'm gonna have to stop share and share sounds. Oh, good, it's, I am sharing sounds. Okay, so I can share this video. Um, in this particular example, students, these are middle school students, so sixth or seventh graders had to redesign their school library. So let me see if I can get the video playing. Our assignment was to research why comfortable seating was more efficient than regular seating. 3D Bear helped me complete this assignment because it actually showed realistic models of what it would look like if it were in that room. We had our imagination put into a screen and we saw it eye to eye, like in a visual. I was really happy when I saw the furniture additions they brought over the summer in our classrooms because it made me think that like the faculty and the teachers were really listening to our ideas and taking into consideration our thoughts. I think it's really going to help kids learn better and stay more focused in school. Oops. So. Um, so th th one of the really cool things about that example is the school, the kids redesigned the library and, the, and, and a few of the classrooms and, and then made a presentation to the school principal. The school actually bought some of the furniture uh, over the summer. When the kids came back the next year, 
you can hear the kids say, oh, that's the chair I designed. Oh, that's the table I wanted. And the kids, you know, redesigned the space. It, it, the, um, the library was, had been in all just different colors of shades of brown. And the kids wanted more color. The kids wanted plants. The kids wanted more comfortable seating. Um, so it was, it was, it's just really cool to see what the kids came up with. Um, if you want to see, you know, if you download the presentation and if you want to see more in, more in detail how this worked in real life and how it fit into academic learning objectives, the librarian who conducted this with her class, there's a YouTube video. I'm not going to play it, but it's, a, it's about a 25 minute YouTube video. Okay. Um, that's linked here. That's real. You know, she's she's great. So it's a it's it's a worthwhile twenty minutes of your time to to understand how she set this up and how it hit her um, academic learning objectives, and then the lesson a lesson plan based on this is um, a description here of how she went about it and did it, and then. The lesson plan itself is linked from that. And it doesn't have to be redesigning the library here in an elementary school. Um, let me let me expand this so you can see it a little bit better. Here in an elementary school, um, the kids redesign their playground. Okay, but you, you look, it's it's a very similar format to the uh, to the other example this one is basically two class periods um, redesign the interior or exter exterior designs of the school um, you know what happens during the lesson maybe some bonus activity what the students are supposed to learn um, an evaluation form um, what learning standards it meets and then here's an, a, a very similar assignment students were asked to redesign a subway or a metro station um, and this one, this one was actually done in Finland. And again, the students wanted more areas to play in the, in the, in the metro station. They wanted flowers. They wanted better colors. They wanted a bicycle rack. And so, um, you know, it's, it, it, the kids wanted things that the adult designers never even thought of. So redesigning a public space is another great example of, um, of a social uh, social mission project that that you can use with students. Any questions on on that? We had a really nice experience um, in Sterling working with a primary school who were due to either stay um, in the building they were in, which is an old Victorian school, or move to a brand new rebuilt school. Now the children started off very much wanting to stay in their old Victorian school and then they went through a design thinking process to redesign a classroom for the 21st century. By the end of it they wanted to move into this new building so that they could um, have input into the design of their new classroom. It completely changed their thinking around um, what a, a learning space could, could be. Um, yeah that's, a, exactly. yeah that's a great example yes yeah um yeah and similar you know now that well d different parts of the world students are either um well they they're either in class or they're in some type of a hybrid or they're 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 learning at home and you could ask them to redesign how would they want to redesign their own learning space at home um, which is a very you know a similar assignment okay and now for social action project number four, which is around the UN Sustainable Development Goals. This I did as a, um, a one day project with a bunch of middle school students, um, which was, I mean, it was, it was, re it was heartwarming because um, they really got into it. So the way um, there's, a, there's a whole lesson plan also attached to this one. Um, it's in a different format, um, a little bit different format than the others, but basically, um, what's the background plan? But I'll tell you what I did is I started off in with the students and I showed them, um, I forgot, uh, uh, showed them a picture of Greta Thunberg, Thunberg and I asked how many knew her 
and every single one of them knew who she was. And we talked about what she was doing and why adults were listening to her. And, you know, it kind of prompted the students, but what, what I, what came out was adults are li really listening to her because kids are a lot more passionate about things than adults are. And teenagers are a lot more creative than adults. But on the other hand, adults have all the power and adults have the money and the adults have the experience. So if we can work together and get the creativity and passion of kids with the experience and money and power of adults, we really could change the world. Then we changed the discussion to come up with a list of the things they were most concerned about, about what the world was going to be like when they became adults. And we had this whole list of things, um, you know, global warming, the climate, um, would they be able to find jobs? Um, you know, would they be able to get health care? You know, they, they really are attuned to the problems that, that, uh, that we're facing. Uh, and they really do have their, their fears. And then we related those to the UN Sustainable Development Goals, and we talked about some of those goals, not all of them, but we talked about some of those goals in relations to the problems that they had come up with. And so, you know, once we had talked about those goals, they then reorganized into um, s smaller groups. And based on their goal or based on their problem that they chose, they came up first with a creating a scene that demonstrated to everybody else why this was a problem. So the scene um, had it, you know, had a you know, why, you know, why is this a problem? What's the situation now? Um, who is this affecting? And then we all got back together again, and they presented, you know, their scenes about their problem. Then we broke into groups again, and they had to develop a second scene about what it's going to look like when this problem is solved. And so after, you know, with, with some prompt questions. And so when we got back together, they then each presented um, for their problem, what the world would look like if that problem were solved. Then we understood that um, we're in a certain situation today we know where we want to go, but we're not going to get there right away. And so they had then, then they had to go back into their groups and say, what's something that we all could be doing right now to make that problem better? And then they had to present that to the group. Now, the presentations were the teachers in their classes were the ones who were being presented to. And at the end of the day, we then had the teachers address the students and describe what they learned during the day which if you think about it is really just, you know, a recap, a summary of what they've learned, but it's, it's taking a whole nother dimension when you have the teachers ex explaining what they learned because the kids understood that they had made an impact on the teachers. And then my goal, which my, my section was only one day, my goal then was for the teachers to go back with the students and discuss, well, okay, now we've come up with this. If we really wanted to change the world, what would we do next? Um, and, uh, and those discussions took place afterwards. So, um, so that's the, the fourth project. And, you know, here's, you know, an example where um, one student, you know, they wanted uh, to reduce the carbon footprint. So if you see, you know, this, this um, uh, I guess, red or purple uh, around something that uses uh, fossil fuels, whereas green around bicycles, and they think there should be a bike rack in front of the building to reduce the, the amount of uh, CO2 that's used. So I, I do want to say, um, just in terms of 3D bear, 3D bear is, you know, can be used for a lot of other things too. Um, it can be used just for fun. So you have here, you know, somebody on their summer vacation put bears in the water. Um, it can be used, um, for early reading. So here teaching numbers and letters. So we have ABC, ape, bears, and cows, and one, two, three, one, eight, two bears, three cows. Um, it can be used for fanciful. Um, I love these on the on the right side is is um, a rebus, which is kind of a word puzzle. So this word puzzle 
is once in a blue moon. <laughs> Um, so you, you can have the kids create word puzzles um, and you can have create, kids create scenes based on the different holidays. So, um, oh, and I do want to say um, I'm, I do a lot of webinars. Um, down below here is a link for EdChat Interactive. I actually have one tomorrow um, that I'm doing with a master teacher from India named Monica Joshi, and she's going to be talking about cross-curricular lessons to unleash student creativity. Um, and if you, again, if you download this and you go to the website for EdChat Interactive, um, you see um, here, there's one on the 22nd, one on the 8th, and one on the 25th. Um, and these are all, these are always free. They're just um, interesting things generally that educators are doing in their classroom that they want to share share with other educators. And um, that's that's what I wanted to present. And so um, the presentation link here is on the left, and the three D bear link is on the right. And I'm looking at the time, and I'm supposed to end in three minutes. So um, the timing, I guess, worked out pretty well. You've done very well, really well. I'm just taking a, a photo and just getting your link to the presentation. And I've, I've, um, I've already downloaded 3D Bear. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. If by any chance you have questions on it, um, uh, you know, you have my email. You know how to get in contact with me. Yeah. No, that, that's been brilliant. If, if you can you stop your, your share your screen. That oh, I'm so sorry. Yes. No, I just, okay. I'm going to stop and I'm actually going to stop my recording also.